Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're a fan of modifying and upgrading handheld consoles like the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Colors, Neo Geo Pockets, any of them, and if you're here, you probably are. Well, today we're going to do another boxy pixel build, which is kind of a high end aluminum shell build on a Game Boy Advance SP. This is known as the boxy pixel SP unhinged. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get that done. All right, on the bench today, we have another boxy pixel build. Um, I know the last one was kind of popular. I got a lot of comments uh, from the local crowd and um, just a lot of feedback uh, in general. And um, while these are extremely expensive, they are very nice. The, uh, they're, they're very high quality machined uh, aluminum shells and uh, they just make for a nice feel. This particular one is gonna be a little different than the last one in the fact that we are going to convert uh, Game Boy SP. Um, in our last video, which I'll link up there, we used a standard Game Boy Advance. So it was the, the flat one with the buttons on the sides. This one is gonna turn it more into a um, kind of a standard Game Boy format. Um, I guess they found it, you know, it was gonna be difficult or more too expensive to uh, go ahead and make the clamshell uh, to be aluminum. So what do we have? We have the we have the shell from Boxy Pixel, which are these four parts here, uh, the front case, the rear case, which looks like a standard SP case, um, kind of the top rear cover, and a battery cover, which I kind of like to see that. Um, in the other build, you had no choice but to use the Boxy Pixel battery. They removed the dry cells and they did not machine a uh, battery box into the, the case. I don't know why, for the price, I would have really liked to see one, but the build was for a customer and not for personal use. This particular one is gonna be a personal use uh, Game Boy. I had uh, one of my fans uh, post this up. Um, they decided to go a different direction and they gave me a good deal on it and that's why uh, we have it here today. So, the as you can see, we have our shell. We have the USB charge board, which is the same charge board as in the last one. Um, although this one, since this one already runs on a LiPo, it's not that big of a deal to go ahead and use this kind of board. We have the boxy pixel battery, uh, which is kind of just a generic um, single cell LiPo. And it has a charge control board in it for protection, which is nice. So if you short the wires or overcharge or undercharge, uh, it has built in protection. So we don't have to rely on this. Um, we also have a funny playing uh, IPS screen that's gonna go in here. And the aluminum buttons from the kit. The only thing we need for the donor is our main board, just like in our other one. Um, the SP is a little bit different with the tactile buttons, but we still need the um, rubber membranes, our speaker, and bumpers and plastic switches uh, or the switch cover for the power switch and the volume control. So for a moment, I'm just gonna set some of this aside. Oh yes, and it came with the hardware. Um, there are countersunk screws and standard screws. So I kind of separated them um, just so they were easier to deal with after the fact. So I'm gonna set some of this shell aside because we don't need all of it at the moment. Oh, and by the way, I have never done one of these, so we're gonna be doing it together. And yes, I will be referencing their build guide. Um, there's just no way around it. When you have custom things like this, um, you can't just wing it. So, where to start? The first thing they ask you to do is to verify fit of all the buttons and uh, you know if there's any little flashing just use a hobby knife to kind of scrape the flashing away and also down in these pockets. Um, I believe, 
Since this was somebody else's project, I believe it has already been done. So let's just go ahead and see how it fits. And of course, there's no fitment issues. And let's see, are any of these buttons marked with anything? No, they are not. So we have our select and our start and our backlight, our front light actually. And huh, these ones are a little bit different. I guess they leave those open for if you're using the plastic buttons, uh, you know, the guides for the A and B, but their buttons are just a slug that fits down in the hole. There we go. Okay, so we will also need our membranes and yeah, if they're a little bit dirty, go ahead and give them a cleaning, but these aren't carbon trace membranes like, um, you know, standard Game Boy. But since you're reusing something old, you might as well make sure they're clean. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna drop our speaker in. I went ahead and grabbed the black speaker grill. And while you're here, you could go ahead and lift these tabs up just a little bit, just to make sure they have a good connection. Okay. All right, oh, and one last membrane. There we go. So that's kind of top shell all together. And I'm just gonna go ahead and look at like I said, I'm going right with the guide. So the next thing they want us to do is to trim. And uh, if you're gonna do this, you're definitely gonna need a set of flush cutters. These aren't horribly expensive. Um, you know, I buy them five at a time and probably only spend 12 or $13. But they are not for heavy materials. If you try to cut anything other than basically wire, you're just gonna destroy the, uh, the cutting edge. So we're gonna come up here and trim off any of the sharp ends. I guess this is to protect the ribbon cable since it's no longer up in a hinge. <laughs> well, that's a good, <laughs> good reason to wear the glasses. Um, one just popped and flew up at me. I don't know if they want them all trimmed, but you know, we're here and might as well just take care of anything that's kind of long or sharp. All right, we got a little extra clearance on all that. And that's pretty good. All right, what's next? Um, oh yeah, I guess uh, if you're unsure about your screen, you should probably go ahead and test it or unsure about your board. Now, in our case, this board came straight from our, our parts bucket. Um, I'm hoping it's good. Uh, chances are the board was fine, but the screen was smashed or the, you know, the shell was destroyed. Um, I had a few SP boards laying around, so this project was a good, uh, good timing on it. All right. So of course they show some little 3d printed holder to kind of hold this up, but I just put a paper towel down and you know, that'll protect our shell. Um, they also mentioned to check the threads, which I already had. There was some screws down in them already uh, when I got it. So if you're unsure, go ahead and take some of the small screws, run them in and out, make sure they're good. Uh, let's see the next step. They're talking about the speaker. Now we're on to the charge port. Now this brings me to a point that I didn't care for on the other build and on this build. These are extremely expensive shells and kits. Um, with the aluminum buttons and buying an, uh, an IPS screen, you're gonna be into it for 150 plus, just depending on your options. But yet, they tell you to use foam tape or hot glue. Hot glue has no business being in a build, but they tell you to use it. Um, for the price they charge, they should have pre-cut 
double-sided foam pads that just fit in here. But I always have some double-sided foam laying around, so we'll just cut us off a piece. Doesn't need to be the whole way to the edge of the board, but we'll cover most of it. It'll make sure that it doesn't push out or do anything strange later on. Also, they don't talk about, at this stage of the um, build, they don't talk about where our wires are going to go necessarily. So, we'll have to check that. I might turn off the cameras for a moment just to, just to verify. Um, they want you to put that down in there, but I know we need to solder right to that point. So, I guess I shouldn't have taken that off yet. Well... Yeah, let's just do it their way. It's just going to be close quarters. So, there we go. All right. So, we got everything in our top shell. And let's see. This is probably going to mount just about like that because the cartridge will go down and our buttons will, our shoulder buttons will be up. So, we'll set it like that just to kind of keep it, our mind in the right direction. All right, so yeah, so now they want the positive and negative um, soldered. So, if I'd have read the instructions beforehand, I would have probably soldered up some wires on this before we got into it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and use a curved tip and we can get right down in there without a problem. As soon as it warms up, there we go. I'm just going to tin up these pads. It'll be easier to... Okay. And I got some 30 gauge wire put aside. 30 doesn't hold much power, but we don't need to hold much power on this. Um, we're, we're dealing with... Oh, anytime I've run an SP on my power supply, I'll set it to... I'll set it to an amp output, but most of the time you're talking two tenths, so 200 milliamp, 30 to 25, 26 would be fine. Um, all right, so they're showing this first one being our positive wire. So I'll try to get it where I can show it. not get my head in the shot. Let's see. I'm gonna add a little more solder to that pad just to make it easier on myself. All right, so we have our positive or our negative. And I'm not sure where this is gonna go, but I'm sure we're gonna need it outside of the circuit board. So we're just gonna kinda bend them like that. Okay, everything looks good. All right, so the next thing, well, this ain't gonna be fun. All right, so the next point is we're gonna solder connections. They're showing it right to the shell and the second pin on the right. And first of all, I don't want to solder to the metal because, well, that's just silly. There's gotta be other grounds in there. So let's just find them. I'm guessing it's every other bare bit of copper or metal in this. So we have it on uh, continuity mode. So to the shell, 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 copper strip, copper strip, copper, copper, copper. Okay, so pretty much any of the copper 
ground plane can be used. Obviously these test points are not going to be part of it. You can, there's no beeping, but those are. So we can catch a ground wherever we feel like. This one, as you can see, it's, it's very close quarters, unless you have a steady hand and, and good soldering equipment, which obviously here in the shop I do, but I know a lot of my viewers out there probably don't. So we need to find a different place to solder to. So if this is our positive lead, which I know it is, this right here says marked F1, that's our fuse. So, and I, I suspect, you know, that's where the incoming power is. So as you can see, there's a large bit of copper right there. I'm just gonna go ahead Take a hobby knife, scratch some of that away. There's other ways of doing this. They actually have a, a small fiberglass, um, almost looks like a pen and it's abrasive and it's meant for removing the UV mask or not UV mask, but the solder mask. So now that we have exposed copper, put a little flux on it. Come up the temp, clean our tip. There we go. Now we have a solder pad that has no problems being soldered to. All right. So that's a change already from their instructions. So let's see, there is a, an option for a headphone jack and uh, the person who gave me the kit supplied me with one, although this is not the one that BoxyPixel sells. And since I don't use my headphones and I don't feel like pinning that out right now, um, as most of you know, if you want to use headphones, they sell a small adapter that just goes right in the uh, charge port or the data port. Well, no, that's not the data port. This is our data port. That's our charge port. Okay. Oh, I think I forgot to mention, this is a V1 kit. Um, the new V2 kit, as far as I can tell, slight change in the cosmetics and uh, you know how our um, uh, LED indicators for our charge and power um, go through. So we're going to skip the headphone jack for now. And since we have a boxy pixel or this is, I don't know if this is the boxy pixel screen or just the funny playing, but I know there's the one wire there for um, the backlight. So we're going to have to steal from pin 120 or 12 B. No. Yeah, 12B, let's find it. Looks like it's right there. So it's just off the edge of our D-pad. And we're gonna tin that up also. And you can see how nice when adding flux to things, how it it just flows right onto the pad. So let me just verify that. Yeah, 12B, and that's gonna be our backlight. It's actually going pretty quick. So, let's figure out how, they kind of omit a step. They talk about connecting these wires to the board, but since this is on this side of the board and we still have to deal with our screen. They don't really explain what they want us to do. So I'm going to bring our screen in. I'm going to kind of figure this out. So make sure our membranes are in place. We'll see how our board's going to fit. Okay, 
So there's plenty of room to come around the edge of the shell. Since there's not a lip on this shell, it just meets flat. We can definitely let's see our cartridges here, so we don't want to come up off this edge. We can definitely come around and we'll solder our wires there. You know what? We're going to leave that for once we kind of have our screen installed. I think it'll be easier. Uh, and then we'll be ready to work on this side. If we try to solder it now, we might limit movement. So let's see what it takes to get this screen in place. Um, you know what? Give me one minute. I'm going to look at the instructions kind of close on this. And because uh, obviously we've got to do something with all this extra ribbon. I'll be right back. All right. So I think we're going to need some capped on tape. And I'm just going to put a length of it right here so it's convenient. And uh, for you guys who don't know, Kapton tape is um, a good electrical tape, but not for like wrapping up wires, for like inside of components like this. It's heat proof, it's electrical proof, um, and uh, I also use it whenever I'm using hot air to remove parts. So like if we want to remove this chip, but there's something plastic next to it, I could use a, a little bit wider bit and I'll just put it over top of it and it, it just keeps the heat off of things. So. We're going to go ahead and kind of get this screen in place and we might as well give it a test um, just because, but even if something's wrong, we're going to go continue with the build um, because I may have to replace a screen or find another board. So that's that. I know I always have <laughs> keep a stack of uh, handheld batteries over here. And this is actually an SP battery right on top. So let's go ahead and hold it in place. Oh, went on for a second. There's a the switch. I think the battery's dead. Well, I saw it kick on for a second and, uh, and, uh, you know, so I know things are working there. I'm going to give that switch a cleaning though. And you've seen me do this in my other videos. <sighs> Sorry. Can't wear those all the time. Just when I'm looking at the small stuff. So just get a little alcohol down inside the switch. Hold the top, run it back and forth just to make sure you polish it. That should be fine. All right, so let's go back to our screen. I'm gonna go ahead and put the connector in. Lock it in place. And we are gonna solder this wire. Let's see, it needs to come around. Now there's a lot of room in this one, so it's going to be in this area. I guess we can come up the whole way up and around. We're just going to do it this way. All right. There we go. All right. So there should be enough slack in that to get the whole way around that. And we're going to carefully flip it all over and come over to our chassis. All right. So the other thing we want to since this board is going to move around, I was going to put some thin double-sided tape on it, but since we're already all kind of locked into place, I'm just going to make sure it's flat. I'm going to put some Kapton across that corner like that, uh, because this is the clip that was already snapped together uh, for the controller board. So I guess at this point, we're going to have to, well, let's make sure our membranes are all where they're supposed to be. They are. Get our board in place. Yeah. 
Oh, hold on. Saw something shiny. Just want to make sure there's nothing under there. All right. Get our board in place. I'm going to hold it up and we're going to put a couple of these little screws in. I believe this third hole isn't being used anymore. So there we go. All right, so moving right along here. Uh, they want us to solder up our battery, but I'm not there yet. I think they're jumping the gun. So we're gonna go ahead and peel our membrane or our screen protector. And we are going to slide this underneath. like that. And we will put another piece of capped on tape over that. All right. Anybody have any questions yet? <laughs> if you do, make them down below. I'll, uh, I'll answer them as we need. All right, so I think we're doing pretty good here. We already have the slider on there. And we should go ahead and put our switch in because I, I have a bad habit of forgetting to, to add that little piece of plastic. All right, so now let's go ahead and mount these wires. Um, this isn't a switch, you have a volume jack here. So we can definitely come in just like this and around this capacitor. I'm gonna tuck it in, make sure it's tucked into the shell. So we wanted to come around this little support, but we wanna stay out of our volume slider. So we just wanna tuck them in right there. And now we can trim them to fit however and wherever we want to solder these. So I'm just going to trim a little off this, strip it back. There's our positive lead. And we're gonna go for our negative. What do you think? I've got plenty of wire. Just go ahead and go right up to this big square. Get it down a little flatter. There we go. Okay. That should all be out of the way. Shouldn't hit anything or touch anything when the shell goes together. But we can verify that. All right, something is hanging us up. Give me a minute and I'll figure it out. All right, uh, the only thing that was holding us up, I was afraid something in this shielding uh, for where the uh, cartridge comes in was, was hitting. I just wanted to verify. All it was is the pocket where the, the switch goes in is just machined very tight. So it was hanging up. It just didn't want to push together. So you're better off to go ahead and put it in that end of the shell. All right, so. Where does that leave us? Um, I guess we should be thinking about installing our battery wires.
And since this is just going to sit on top of there, there's lots of room and it looks like it's just going right through that hole anyway. All right, so we'll just set that aside for a second. We're going to come in here and add some solder to these pads. All right, I didn't like that. So let's add a little flux. Flux just helps the solder flow. It changes the surface tension. And as you can see, it goes from being a little bit bumpy to kind of a nice silvery ball. But since it was bumpy, I want to make sure... No, we're good. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we didn't bridge a gap anywhere. And I'm going to trim off a little of the excess here. And we're going to get these soldered up. Kind of show them standing. Although I'm not sure about that. Let's see if this is going to fit like that. We don't. Well, yeah, I guess we can. It can be any direction, I think. So I'm going to turn them out this way. And we're going to tin these up real quick. I know I'm blocking it, and I'm sorry. It's kind of inevitable, but there you go. Got our positive and our negative soldered up. And that will fit through the shell without a problem. So we've got our... Everything in place, everything's taped up. So let's see how this is going to fit. Because this slides kind of under the edge of the board, like that. These are going to use the non countersunk screws. I think it came with more hardware than it needs, uh, which is good because these are teeny little screws. These look like to be about two millimeter. I'm assuming they're metric. All right. And I think it's time for our shoulder buttons. And I'm pretty sure we're just gonna ditch these springs. Yeah. It really doesn't need the springs. Um, a lot of times whenever I'm working on these, you know, I take the springs out. Um, the, the button itself has plenty of pressure to go ahead and push the um, uh, push the, the the button out on its own, or you know the 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 actual shoulder button. All right, I think we're on our home stretch here, and we'll fit the rear housing. Sure the switch is in and in the right position. Now the nice thing is you don't have to use this boxy pixel battery. You are more than welcome to use the OE battery. As far as I know, the boxy pixel one 
his quite a bit more. So this, this is an aftermarket uh, SP battery and it's rated at 600 milliamp and I believe that's all the stock one was. Oh, here's a stock one right here, actually. Oh no, that's not a stock. That's a DS battery. What's this one? That's a DS battery. Those are all DS batteries. Okay, They're different versions of the DS. So this one's 1700 milliamp. So it's just more modern. And let's see, down in those holes, who knows what they are. Let's take a peek down and see what we can see down inside there. Those are all flat screws too. So it came with a whole bunch of these countersunk screws. I think we only need two of them to hold the battery door in place. Now I'm not cranking on these screws, I'm just seating them. Um, just because I don't know how everything is going to go. Um, I verified when I had the camera off last time that like none of the wires were pinched or, or anything like that. But we can go back and snug them up after, after we're done. And if things are right. Hopefully we don't let the, uh, the magic smoke out. <laughs> All right, well, that's a good sign. Although, who knows how much charge is in this battery. Um, so if you have, if you're gonna use the, um, the stock battery, I think there's a um, shim that you need to put in or a piece of foam uh, to, to hold it in place because this battery is bigger. Let's see, yeah, it looks like it's tucked in fairly well. And our battery door goes in with those two pins. And now we need some of these countersunk screws. All right, the question is, is there that nice little polish but man I mean before I even turn this on uh, I do have some things against this boxy pixel but man these turn into such a nice they've got some good weight the buttons feel nice uh, I just think it's a shame that in several of their steps they talk about hot glue um, you know, even the, the light pipes for the uh, LEDs for your charging and whatnot. Um, I don't know. It, it just is a, a bit of a disappointment in those regards. Um, for the money that you're, you're paying for these shells, they need to just include some double-sided tape. Or, yeah, include some double-sided tape. And they need to think of their engineering just a bit beyond their initial builds and designs. Um, one of the other things, and I'll, I'll get a, pic, a screenshot here of it. On the back shell here, they, there's, uh, let's see, five, two big ones on the side, three across the top, um, kind of like spacers to, to hold the screen in place. But they actually say some IPS screens are thicker than others. If yours is thicker, uh, you'll have faint dark or orange brown spots in the viewable area when it's uh, screwed into place. I understand that they tried to keep the tolerances to a minimum, but like I said just earlier in this video, at one time I owned a machine shop, I was making motorcycle parts, and you had to think about things such as this. So they measured the screen they had, but the quality control of the screens is out of their hands because they're buying screens or using screens from other companies. Um, so they have to think about that, and they need to machine a tolerance. Now, in this case, you want it to be snug so that screen doesn't move around. But in this case, they could have just taken a few thousandths out of it or, you know, like 20 thousandths out of it and just used some double side tape or a small piece of foam in the back to hold everything tight. Um, because, I mean, let's face it, glass and clamping with aluminum isn't necessarily the safest idea. So, Let's go ahead and see if there's any charge. I guess we should get a, a cartridge. 
which I always keep this multi-cart here. And we'll give her a shot. There we go. Well, what can I say? It's an IPS. It's an IPS screen. Now in our case, we don't have any of the brown spots, so this screen fits the shell properly. We got a red light here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. I believe, yes. So the USB charge board, all we're using it for is a voltage regulator to the stock port. So if I'm not mistaken, you know, and we hooked the battery to the stock battery location. So we should be able to charge it. And this is one of my multi cords. You can get these off Amazon. Um, I can link it below. It's got, um, this is the SP and the original DS, uh, the DS Lite. No, this one's the DS Lite. And then this is all of our other DSs and 3DSs after. And then there's also the bonus um, PSP. So let's go ahead and see if that charges with either port. Plug it in. There we go. We got a charge indicator. And if I have a convenient USB-C cord, which I do, but I don't have a convenient. <laughs> My USB ports are way down there. So it will also charge USB-C now in the bottom. So that's it in a nutshell. There's a boxy pixel build for the Game Boy Unhinged, um, Game Boy Advanced Unhinged. Uh, like I said, this is a V1 to the V2. It's just some cosmetic and uh, I think the way the light pipes mount inside, uh, some very minor changes. Um, if you're into your handhelds and you just want an awesome feeling system, go ahead and look into it. So if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and make them down below please give us that thumbs up. But if you have to give us a thumbs down, make a comment. Tell us what we can do to change the way we present things. I know this one seemed a little bit long-winded, but like I said, I had never seen one and I was going straight off their instructions, which honestly are pretty good. Um, if you check Google for BoxyPixel, it'll be one of the first things that comes up. Don't forget to hit the bell notification and hit that subscribe for us because it really does help out the channel. I appreciate you being here. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.